All right, this is going to be a follow-up video to my Against Public Education video. I wanted to do several videos on this topic. I wasn't sure if I'd do them sequentially or not, uh, but um, here I am. I am going to do this sequentially. Uh, this kind of doesn't make a lot of sense, but a lot of times after I make a video, I start to actually do a little bit more research. Um, and so after I made that video, I did a little bit more reading on the Prussian education system. It is uh, often alleged by libertarians, and this is something I think that uh, in contemporary society is most often comes from John Taylor Gatto and his research. Uh, it's not because he invented it. He's the most um, widely known proponent of, of this idea currently, although it is, it is in fact not a, a controversial assertion to say that the United States public school system is very heavily influenced, if not based on the Prussian system. And the Prussian system is uh, likewise the initial or the first uh, publicly funded mass education system. Now the states have you know, spent money on what could be termed education for a long time, but the idea that it would be given in mass is a relatively new concept and it can be traced to uh, the Prussian, the kingdom of Prussia. The most authoritarian state in Europe, basically. Uh, now, for this video, I want to talk about uh, what the actual role of public schools are. The, the idea, the justification for them that is given is that they are there, the government is providing um, a service to everybody by educating people. This is uh, something that is would not happen or not happen nearly enough if the government were not doing it. If, if, if government schools were, were ended, it is alleged that there would be far less education happening. Uh, people seem to accept that at least some people would still be able to get it, but usually they think only the rich uh, and that everyone else would be stupid. Also, that there's kind of arguments here about uh, positive externalities being, even if you don't have children, even if you don't like public schools, they still benefit you because they make the citizenry smarter, and so you owe for that also. Uh, which reminds me, I should do a video on positive externalities. But uh, basically, historically, that is not the purpose of public schools. Public schools did not come about because politicians were looking across society and saying, look, society has a problem, and that problem is that there's too much ignorance and not enough education. People aren't smart enough. There's not enough literacy. So we should tax people and then use those tax funds to provide institutions that will teach people those things. That is not the genesis of public schooling in this country or in other countries. And it would be my allegation that the primary purpose of public schools as a, as an, as a tool within society is to sway and affect the ideology of the masses, either for the good of the state or for whatever special interest thinks such power would be advantageous to them and has the political means to wield that power. Uh, which I think people can take that a little too far and then suddenly imagine that every single government employee who has anything to do with public schools uh, uniformly and consistently uh, works towards that end, you know, like that at every curriculum meeting they talk about how are we going to brainwash the kids more and every teacher thinks that and every politician who ever passed or voted for or supports public schools is consciously aware of that. That's not true. Uh, there are, I believe there are politicians, especially the ones who initiate programs like this, who are thinking in those terms. There are current politicians who maybe view public schools as being educational, but also view them as potential potentially very useful in expounding their own ideology and so they you know use what influence they have to, to achieve that. Uh, I think though there is certain really compelling pieces of evidence uh, in contemporary society to indicate that really it is designed as a tool for social control and not something to uh, educate the masses and then I want to talk a little bit more about the history of Prussia. Um, if we look at the common debates around education, if, if education was really about providing some kind of uh, either a uniform or even a varied educational template that would be beneficial to everybody or at least lots of people, then the debate 
about public education would be focused on determining that pedagogy. It would be, what would be, and Gatto hates the term pedagogue because apparently pedagogue is, is, is from ancient Rome and that's somebody who basically is teaching uh, the child of the aristocracy to learn by rote and that's actually considered a, a low form of education. But I think today it has a more general meaning just kind of like a teacher or someone's teaching. Maybe I'm wrong about that, but the, the debate, if, if, if that's what the public schools are for, that would be what the debate would be about. People would be talking about, okay, you know, how many contact hours does it take to get literacy? What is the best way to achieve that? You know, what is the best way to achieve critical thinking if that's something that we value? How are we going to weigh these? And by the way, I think these are ludicrous debates to have to talk, to generalize to the entire population. I just think it's absolutely insane to say, okay, well, everybody needs this amount of Latin, this amount of Spanish, this much math, and so on and so forth. Um, you know, but th that's where the debates would be. But if you look about it, the debates are always about prayer in school, evolution, the Pledge of Allegiance, uh, that sort of thing. And and I think the most pertinent one is the evolution versus creationism debate. Now, it's very hard to talk about this in the context of public schools without people leaping to the erroneous conclusion that by debating its role in education, one is debating the validity of evolution. That's certainly not the case with me. I have always believed in evolution. I find it very interesting. Uh, it's one of my side hobbies. It's one of the few topics that could be considered science that I'll take the time to read on my own. I've read several books about paleoanthropology, about human evolution particularly, because I find that the most interesting, probably because I find it the most um, pertinent to myself. I mean, not that the evolution of brachiopods is completely boring, but it's somewhat less relevant. You know, the, the same basic evolutionary um, generalities you learn from Brachiopods, you learn from looking at Australopithecus, so, you know, why not learn a little bit about ourselves? Anyway, it's, it's a side point. If we were to, the, the reason I think uh, this debate indicates is kind of shows that the emphasis of schools are as a tool of social control and social manipulation and not some objective debate about what is the best quote unquote education children need, and then, of course, assuming the state should, 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 should provide it is that uh, evolution, regardless of how valid it is, is not something that recommends itself as a cornerstone to any kind of education, at least in a major way. As I said in my previous video, most jobs people have will not require them to know anything about evolution. Maybe if you want to be a biologist or a geneticist or a paleoanthropologist and a handful of other just ology related academic jobs, uh, knowing that much about evolution is not necessary. And indeed, the vast majority of people who, uh, of the statheists out there who, who are the secular humanists who, who pimp evolution like crazy, most of them, and I include myself here as well, don't have a great understanding of evolution. In fact, if they were to have a job, if we were to take the people who comment on videos about how evolution is necessary in schools and, and, and creationism shouldn't be there and we were to take them and put them in a job where they did need to have a functional well understood ability to utilize evolutionary theory they would probably fail at those jobs because their understanding of evolution is probably pretty perfunctory uh, and the fact that they don't know that much about evolution uh, of course doesn't prove evolution is wrong and it doesn't prove uh, that it's worthless but it does prove that it's really not that valid because they can live normal lives, high-functioning lives without it. Um, unless you are in one of those careers or you're in another career of the high sciences or the hard sciences, uh, it doesn't. it's not obvious that evolution would be that important. Even if we thought it would be important in some kind of generalized way, uh, it's only one of you know thousands of potential sciences that are also valuable in a general way and I know people say well but evolution is true and so it really should be there well there's a lot of things that are true you know Icelandic is a real language that people really speak and that does not mean that Icelandic needs to be in the curriculum you know if you want to study Nordic languages then that makes sense 
maybe if you want to think you want to get somebody in the position where they they are able to learn additional languages, it makes sense to include a weird language like Icelandic. But it's not something that we would be if 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 thousands and if millions of liberals are out there saying that Icelandic needs to be in the curriculum and we need to replace you know Spanish or something with it, it's clearly not because there's some kind of objective educational region what reason why that should be. There must be some other reason uh, why they would want to push Icelandic. Now, I can't think of a good one. You know, There would have to be some conspiracy about the, the Icelanders trying to take over this country, but I think that the analogy is similar because there isn't any pressing need to consider evolution, however valid it is, to be important enough to be in the curriculum for everybody. And I think what the indication there is, it's clearly Clearly, the emphasis for putting it there is to use it as a weapon in the culture war, specifically against fundamentalism and the literal interpretation of the Bible. The secular humanists, and this is explicit, many of them will admit this frankly, they are not viewing the public schools as a place to have a debate on what's the best kind of education and hence evolution plays a part of it. They look at the public schools as a weapon to spread their ideology, to make others conform to their ideology, and they think that the main enemies that they see are the, you know, evangelical Christians, the right wing, however you want to call it, they kind of mush a whole, several different distinct groups of people all together, and they think that evolution is a really powerful weapon in that, and that's the emphasis. And so, my point here is to say that the idea that public schools are, are therefore uh, implementing social change to change the ideology of the populace is actually pretty clear. It's implicit and in some places explicit if, when the people are honest enough to admit it in most of the debates regarding what should or should not be taught in public schools. Now, that being said, uh, the fact that it's a that that's what they're for. The public schools are are there to uh, push ideology onto people, not necessarily to provide a great education or any kind of education. Uh, that doesn't necessarily mean that the way people are using the tool, public schools, is uniform. So it may be true that hammers are designed, you know, to pound nails, and, and the public schools are designed to uh, indoctrinate children to obey the state. But it doesn't mean that that's always what they get used for. Hammers get used for all kinds of things. And this public school system, as I alluded to earlier in the video, it's not only used by the state, it's also used by any special interest that feels that it can take control of it. And again, another contemporary modern example are the creationists using political power to influence public school curricula, to push or to negate. And this is, of course, a counterattack on their part, I would say, to the secular humanists who are attempting to eradicate religion and I think the public schools are the most important tool for that and the and that is that is why there is so much emphasis on evolution there is no other possible explanation there's nobody Neil deGrasse all these scientists most of them could be successful physicists or whatever and not have a sound understanding of evolution very few people need that there's no reason to pick that other than it directly contradicts the literal literal interpretation of the Bible. It's not more true than other aspects of science, just like it's not more true than Icelandic is a language. Uh, it's the only reason to emphasize it is to use public schools for that end, and I think that's their primary pur purpose. Now, let's go in a little bit of the history here. Now, I've you know you bring up Prussia, and most people who are public school educated think that you're saying Russia, and you just forgot to use an R and used a P instead. Like, oh, he must have dyslexia. He can't even say Russia right now. Public school edu educated people. Prussia was a state in Central Europe, and it is was eventually the state that uh, conquered all the other German areas, pretty much, and formed the modern nation state of Ger uh, Germany. Now. Uh, this is going to be straight from Wikipedia, which, of course, is not the most exhaustive, exhaustive fight, uh, site. Uh, well, actually, it is the, the biggest encyclopedia ever, but uh, it's not the be-all and end-all, but it's a good place to start. But if you look on the article title, Prussian Education System, and then you click down and it says, The Political Motivations of the King of Prussia. I'll just read this all because it's relatively short. 
Seeking to replace the controlling functions of the local aristocracy, the Prussian court attempted to instill social obedience in, in the citizens through indoctrination. Every individual had to become convinced in the core of his being that the king was just, his decisions always right, and the need for obedience paramount. The schools in Pol imposed an official language to the prejudice of ethnic groups living in Prussia, let's please be like Poles and Czechs and whatnot, Silesians. The purpose of this system was to instill loyalty to the crown and to train young men for the military and the bureaucracy. As the German philosopher Johann Gottlieb Fichte, a key influence on the system, said, if you want to influence the student at all, you must do more than merely talk to him. You must fashion him and fashion him in such a way that he simply cannot will otherwise than what you wish him to will. Okay, so this is Wikipedia. It is a moderate thing. It is not a right-wing John Taylor Gatto, although he's produced lots of uh, research to uh, corroborate this. Uh, conspiracy theory. This is standard history. And I, uh, you know, kind of first came across these ideas when I was still in college. And as it happened, I was taking a history course, a German history course. And uh, I went and even asked my professor, who was a German history professor, you know, is this true? Is, is public education uh, was more or less founded in Prussia? And was it considered to be something to be used by the state? Uh, and of course, yes, that was not a controversial um, statement of conspiracy theory that was straight up uh, history and then I asked and is it true that the US system is largely based on the Prussian system and yes that is also not uh, controversial and if you look on this same Wikipedia article right in the index uh, you know it has the index of what's in the article uh, it has emulation of the Prussian education system in the United States that it has its own sub article and I'm not going to read that one uh, but suffice to say uh, back in the 19th century there weren't really any uh, colleges in the United States that were offering PhDs in fact the only places you could get PhDs was in Prussia and so uh, highly educated Americans if that was what they wanted to do oftentimes we travel to Germany and get educated there now that doesn't mean that all of them came back uh, convinced or willing or wanting or even thinking about implementing the Prussian education system in the United States, but many of them were thinking of that. However, even more so, social reformers in the United States in the late 19th century were looking around and they didn't like what they were seeing in society. And it depends who you're talking about what they didn't like. They, uh, many of them were wasps, the white Anglo-Saxon Protestants, and one thing that they were really upset about was the spread of Catholicism. There weren't tons of Catholic settlers originally in the United States. I know Maryland is supposedly a Catholic colony, but it was a new thing in New England. And there were more and more Catholic immigrants, especially from Ireland, or most famously from Ireland, but from all over. And for such theocratic-minded people as the Puritans were, and their descendants were, they, even though they weren't still Puritans, they were still you know, very, very much puritanical, uh, this was anathema to them. And one thing they really hated about it was Catholics tend to perpetuate themselves by having parochial Catholic schools and, of course, teach Catholicism. And so many of these reformers looked at this and thought, we need to stop this, and the only way you can stop it is with the state. There is no way you can, uh, on your own, go and close all the Catholic schools. And so the idea came up that there should be compulsory schooling, uh, that the Catholic schools would not meet, or that their parents would be forced to subsidize, or that their parents would be willing to use since they would be free and the Catholic schools would not be, and that uh, the public schools then would instill uh, American, that is to say Protestant values, uh, into the Catholic students. Uh, even more generally, this had even greater impetus was, uh, and this is related, but not exactly the same, is the idea of all these immigrants. Many people said, we don't like all these immigrants. We don't like Irish or Italians. We want all these people to be, quote unquote, good Americans. And the public schools were seen as a way to do that. Not, again, this is not a, they're not educated. We need to give them an education. Our, then that will give us positive externalities because they'll be smarter and our society will be better. It's, I don't like their culture. I don't like their social existence. I want to, I'm, they, if, you know, to their credit, we're not talking about murdering them all. Um, I mean, the most extreme examples they would have talked about 
exporting them back. That's what, of course, they often talk about doing with blacks. Uh, but they thought we should have public schools and the public schools should be used as a tool of social manipulation uh, to uh, change these immigrants to be more American. And then by the late 19th century, uh, with the, the advent of much more nationalistic ideology spreading in the United States, um, the idea that we can use these schools to perpetuate patriotism is paramount. And we can see this uh, in something that is ubiquitous, and yet people kind of pass it off as insignificant. That is, of course, the Pledge of Allegiance, which is a very, very slavish, statist, obedience to authority, obedience to the state uh, pledge that is, it, it is essentially forced on children. The Supreme Court actually at one point in 1940 actually said that people could be forced to do it. Some Jehovah's Witnesses, for all their quirkiness, I thank them for doing this, uh, you know, objected that their children were forced to go to public schools and then to recite this oath. And in 1940, the Supreme Court had said, I think an eight to one decision almost unanimously that they could be forced. It was only three years later, uh, they basically changed their minds and they said they you couldn't punish a student for doing it, but for not doing it rather, uh, which is very interesting how the court could change its mind so much. Apparently the first decision was very unpopular in the press. I don't know if that was the reason or why, or you know, I don't know that much about the cases, but uh, the pledge is, uh, basically state worship. I mean, you're worshiping the flag and the quote-unquote republic. Uh, and, you know, so to say that a school is indoctrinating children, be like, oh, that's absolutely absurd. Then why does every day start? I mean, we look, that'd be like saying, well, in North Korea, every day everyone has to bow to Kim, um, Kim Il-sung statue. And like, well, that's not indoctrination. That's just a tradition. You're just showing respect for the North Korean government. No, that is fucking indoctrination. And the Pledge of Allegiance is really no different, other than it's only for children and they don't make everybody say the pledge all the time. Uh, so the the government is not going to vote to, pat, to expend uh, funding on schools unless they think they're going to get something from it. And... Obviously, they can't come out and say, well, we want to indoctrinate everyone to be our slaves, although apparently that's considered a good enough justification in Germany. Uh, so they say, well, we're going to give you an education, but there's no way they're not going to include things that they don't think is going to make people more amenable to their rule, more pliable to their rule. And that's, of course, exactly what they've done. Now, has it been consistently carried out? No. Is it, is it like the... the um, motivating factor in every single decision that's ever made relating to public schools? No. Is it the motivating factor for everyone who works in the public schools? No. But that is what the institution is for. And when the decisions are made regarding the curricula, that um, incentive is there, even if the ideology isn't explicitly so. And like I said, if you just look at the debates about what should be taught, they, they reflect the fact that they are public schools exist to be used as a form of social manipulation. And I and I probably should have mentioned this earlier, the sixth situation was extremely successful in Germany uh, because the German people became ex extraordinarily obedient to the German government to the point of they would do anything. They will kill or be killed. I mean, the Jews or whoever else, you know, they went very quietly in Germany. They didn't go very quietly in some other countries like Poland and Russia. Uh, the and then the rest of the Germans were quite willing to uh, do whatever it was the German government ordered them, even though it was literally insane. But that was the point. That was the goal of the school system, and that is what happened. And uh, you know, the United States. That's what's been happening, and I like to think that it has not got so bad as it is in Germany. Um, and in terms of practicality, it's not because there are options. I know homeschooling is persecuted in Germany. It's not legal. Uh, people have tried it, and they get arrested. The children get thrown in public school, and the courts say that your child has a right to a public education, which means they have a duty to attend one. That's what that really ends up meaning in practice. Um, and, of course, private schools, they can exist, but they have to be, to be legal. They have to be basically apes of the government system. Uh, which is 
somewhat true in the United States, probably not as much in Germany. The big difference here, obviously, is the homeschooling is um, not only permitted, but relatively widely practiced and accepted. Uh, there are, of course, people in the bureaucracy who hate uh, private schools and uh, homeschooling, and I met such people when I was in um, the music ed program at Michigan State, the head of the music department there, music education department there. Um, you know, when I told him I was not going to teach in public schools ever, which of course is true, I never ended up doing that, never ended up teaching anywhere, but uh, I, you know, I said, do you think that there's a market for somebody like me in private schools? It was absolutely private schools call me all the time asking for people to come and be band directors. And I said, oh, great. Well, I'm their man. Give them my number. And he goes, I will never help them. I hate private schools. I hate home schools. I will never let anybody, I will never do anything that could potentially help a private school. This is from a guy you know, drawing a public salary, probably in the six figures when you figure out all of his benefits. And why? I, I was like, why? All the research is that the private schools educate better and homeschooling educates better. So what exactly is the problem? If you care about education, then there is no reason to be upset about these institutions that are educating by your own rubrics even better than the system you advocate. If, you know, let's grant, if, if we were to grant that public schools are there to give people an education uh, and that that's an, a necessary, important function, then if there are other institutions that are also educating and by the rubrics that judge public schools are even doing a better job, then it, that should be considered laudable, right? No, because in those systems, then you don't have as much political control of what gets taught and who gets to learn what, even though they're on all the things that you measure, they do better. And so that's an indication that with his impulse is to use them as social control, not as purely, um, you know, dispensaries of wisdom, which is how they justify them when anyone questions them. When anyone says, well, maybe we should get rid of them or lower their funding, all of a sudden it's, oh, no, 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 no. Like everyone will be stupid and dumb. But what they're really interested in is using them as a, as a means of social control. Now, the big delusion when people have this generally with the state is they will accept that the state is using an institution, in this case the schools, for social control, but and they will admit that maybe that could be abused, but they like to imagine that that social control would be wielded by them personally. So the secular humanist um, likes to pretend that the schools are going to act as a club, as his personal weapon in the culture war. And that they're going, so that I, one of the things that uh, instigated me talking about this was a conversation on Reddit with a, a gay guy in the UK, or no, it was a gay guy in the United States. And he was, you know, he's thinking public schools are going to teach of course, that religion is, is wrong and that uh, it's evil. But he also was thinking he's going to teach everyone that gay is good. And you should be gay. Even if you're not gay, you should. I mean, this is what he was saying, that uh, that uh, even if you think you're straight, you should experiment. And he's wanting this because he wants to have, this is like the cliche right-wing fear of the gay agenda. This guy was explicitly thinking and saying. Um, and I'm just like, this is delusional because you are never going to be the dictator of the public school system. So you're advocating it because you're imagining that it's going to do all these things, but it's never going to do all those things. And you're never going to, even if it did, you're not going to be the one who has the power to wield it. So it's going to be whatever special interests have the most political power, and that's just not going to be you. It's not going to be any particular person. Uh, and this is kind of the big uh, bait and switch people think that they're going to get to wield government power themselves. This is how they accept dictatorship. Like, well, if I was dictator, but you're not going to be dictator. So you gotta, you have to assess the system based on the fact that you're going to be a victim or a pawn or a minor par par party in it, not someone who's going to have a controlling, controlling voice. Um, and so in the meantime, you know, their advocacy of the system that they won't ever actually control um, can be used to bolster whoever does control it, which is, of course, always the government and then at various times different, uh, depending on the locale, different other uh, special interests, whether it's the creationists or the atheists or the secular humanists or, I mean, hell, I mean, there's a lot of evidence. We always had to learn about the food pyramid and, and how grains were so good for you, and I've, I've, I've since learned that 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 is very likely a direct result from lobbying from the agriculture, uh, you know, industry. The, the, the big, 
to go in there and, and say, hey, you know, we want to teach kids that the number one thing they need to eat is fucking bread, which I like bread, but it's, you know, that's, <laughs> how does that get in there? It's because there's a special interest who got it in there. And so in the meantime, the secular humanist thinks that, you know, they're imagining this, this Excalibur weapon in the culture war, which really is not in their hands. Uh, and so, you know, a sword that's not in your hands is threatening. And so you should be like, maybe we should, you know, destroy that sword or, you know, not. Or maybe everyone have a sword or something. But as long as they think that it's something they control, then they're not willing to do that. Uh, so obviously there's many, many more issues to deal with public schools. But I think this is all I want to talk about with this one is that the idea that they are, in fact, used for social control. Uh, that is their primary function. Uh, they're not wielded effectively in that respect uh, all the time. And even the debates that we have about what to teach so-called so reflect a greater emphasis on um, ideological uh, manipulation than they do on any kind of objective educational template. So that's it for this video, and I'll see you all later, I think. Yes.